My name is Kate West, and I am one of the producers and co-creator of the film When Lightning Strikes, The Unsexy Side of Awakening, which explores the often overlooked integration process that happens after a spiritual awakening occurs. I'm here today with my co-producer, Katrina Michelle, and Andrew Harvey, who is a fabulous author, mystic teacher. And we're excited today to explore the topics of spiritual awakening, kundalini awakening, mm. and in general. So <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself, Katrina, and maybe Andrew? Sure. So my name is Katrina Michelle. I'm the co-producer of When Lightning Strikes with Kate West. And Kate and I teamed up to explore this phenomena of spiritual awakening. We both had very different experiences with it. And we were both on a path to help others. Uh, I work as a psychotherapist and I, I work with helping people integrate their experiences. And Kate is also taking on a role of service in coming through her awakening and her integration process. So we're here to uh, enlist the help of people like Andrew who understand this um, from their own experiences and also from working with others so that we can further the awareness out in the mainstream because I think spiritual awakening is a word that doesn't mean a whole lot to a lot of people and we want really people to understand that this is a concrete phenomenon that's happening and it's happening more and more every day and we wanna give people the tools and the resources they need to move through it because it's not always flowers and butterflies. So, um, Andrew Harvey, thank you for being with us today. Uh, my please. pleasure, my honor, thank you. Yes, thank you. Maybe you can start by telling the uh, viewers a little bit about who you are and why you're inspired to talk with us today. I'm someone who has been graced with multiple spiritual awakenings and who has spent 40 years really offering whatever I was given back to others. Because I knew from the very beginning of my journey that this was a unique time, a time of radical evolutionary transformation. And that I knew too that if we didn't go through this, we wouldn't survive. This was showtime. This is something I was born with, and it was a very difficult thing to live with. So I wrote 40 books, and I traveled, and I have taught all over the world. But what I'm really working on in the core of myself and in my own life, and in the messages I'm increasingly giving, is this vision that we're going through something far more than a transformation. We're going through a mutation. A new species is trying to be born a unified, loving, compassionate, humble species, unified in an experience, a living experience of the absolute sacredness of the entire cosmos of life, of everything. And why I'm so interested to be with you two is, of course, because I respect immensely what's happened to both of you. And I feel that it's women like you, who transformed and transfigured in this amazing way, will be leading us forward. So I come to learn from you and to touch your feet and to thank you for turning up as empowered, divinizing women, because it's your voice now that can guide all of us into a more radical, passionate, compassionate embodiment of our whole being so that we can together turn up and together in wild holy love build a new world out of the ashes of the old. It's going to take that kind of wild heroic passionate mother love all of us to do this and that's what I see shining in both of you and in your journey and in the whole miraculous alchemical working of the Kundalini, which is what brought us so closely together. Because yes. there's a great birth taking place and the birthing force is the Kundalini, the yeah. birthing force of the mother. Yes. So we know each one of us what that means to have it erupt in our own lives, change everything, burn everything down, make us feel completely crazy, give us all kinds of insane ordeals, and then reveal wonder after wonder after wonder to us, in us. And how wonderful to be together talking about something so utterly at the heart of 
everything that's important about our time. Yes. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> I'm so humbled to hear you talk about it that way. It's just, I get chills everywhere hearing you speak. No, my darling, don't be humbled. It's wonderful. You're part of the birth. You're being born. Something new is being born through you. Consider how truly new it is to be an empowered, divinized woman. Able increasingly to claim her full powers, her full authority. This is a revolution that's happening, and it's happening on multiple levels in the middle of all of this utter insanity. And it's the masterpiece, the birthing masterpiece of Kundalini. It's the birthing masterpiece of the mother of evolution. She is mutating us. She's changing us. And we're arriving, you all of us on this call are arriving as different birthing sprouts in her garden, this wild, fiery, burning garden of hers. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? It is. It's so poetic. I feel we are part of this birthing field, the three of us together, and that everyone who comes together in this time to listen to a conversation like this, everyone is secretly in search for the information that's going to be contained in this conversation because it really is a conversation that couldn't have happened at any other time in history mm. yeah. three people who are getting together knowing that there's a massive awakening taking place a massive birth taking place which makes no sense which goes totally against the scientific paradigm that dominates the whole culture which makes very little sense even within the conventional religions which have largely forgotten that such an immense possibility is real. Mm -hmm. But this is happening and we know it's happening and we know it's happening on an unprecedented scale because the whole situation in which we are in is not just a global catastrophe it's something even more important than that. It's a global dark night experience. It's an experience of being unmade and remade, destroyed yeah. and resurrected, yeah. detached from the madness that has led to this madness through having to give it up and attached to the central glorious truth of our real identity, that we are that, that we are one with the one through a miracle of grace and truth. And that's what all the great mystics have all known. They've all known that there is one reality here, one self, we are all that one self, the aim of life is to realize that because if you do in your own unique way, you will be born in your own unique way as the living child of the one heart, mind, soul, and body. An immense transfiguration, but is humble and down home and loving at the same time the Christ, the Buddha, the reality, but all of those are nothing to this transformation that's coming and it's here right now. And this is what's happening in this great cosmic crucifixion and resurrection that the entire world is living through now. So when people can come to understand that what's happening is an ordained happening for our evolutionary mutation, when they can come to understand that this is, although terrifying and frightening beyond belief, actually known by the great mystics of evolution and known as a tremendous blessing because it makes possible in a very fast time the evolution of the beginning of a new species that is radically unified in love, that cares about the poor, that cares about the animals, that cares about the world not being destroyed by pollution, that cares about the sacred, living, divine body of the divine mother, and so becomes more embodied itself, and so becomes more infused with divine truth itself, and becomes a living, divine, human, unified race, loving the mother-father here in the name of the one, blessing life, 
and blessing justice and living in communion and union with everything that lives. Wow. <laughs> and that's what Madame Kundalini is birthing. That's what we know she's up to yes. through her grace. That's about all we do know, but it's enough to give us the chutzpah and the joy and the passion to turn up as her warrior midwives, as those who are prepared to say something new is happening. Yeah. It's happening and it's amazing and it's scary. But first, be grateful that it is happening and it can happen to you. Yeah. It can happen to you. Because yeah. this birthing is for everyone. Yeah. Isn't you, that wonderful? It is wonderful. It is. It is. It's fascinating because when you uh, when you spoke with us last a few months ago and we talked about filming you in person for for our movie, uh, this pandemic had yet to hit, and we were talking about awakening on a very individual level, you know, in terms right. of one at a time. And all of a sudden, we are now catapulted into this global episode, perhaps like nothing we've ever seen before. And how fascinating that here we are having this conversation again, recognizing the whole world, whether they realize it or not, is in the midst of this dark night of the soul, like you say. Yeah. Yes, but this is actually great good news from a mystical point of view, because it means <laughs> that the birth has started. The dark night, you can see it from the angle of the ego and the dark and feel it and you must. But that's not the final truth of the dark night. The final truth of the dark night is that it's also potentially the birthing ground of a wholly new kind of person. Because if you let the dark night break your heart, it will break your heart open. If you let the dark night dissolve your illusions, reality will start appearing to you. If you let the dark night destroy your fantasies, truth will start becoming your dance partner. Yeah. If you let the dark night make you see with your whole being that you need grace like oxygen, that will make you start up a real passionate mystical practice which will help you unify heart mind soul and body with the beloved so the dark night from the mystical point of view is like that moment when the first fish escaped from the poison sea because they couldn't live in it anymore and leapt onto the shore and started gasping around in a completely new dimension and struggled and yearned and burned and longed and then some of them transformed into the first birds because a mutation had taken place the dark night is that furious furnace of alchemical tormenting and transfiguring energy where this mutation takes place. And that's what's really going on. And it is amazing grace. Because if you can bear it and train for it and really salute it and be awed by what the great mother is up to in it and be humbled and be childlike and open yourself moment by moment to new revelation, new instruction, new rapture, new suffering, new compassion. You will find yourself being opened like a sunflower in and through the great golden light of the transfiguring mother. You will be born into a new being, doing a new embodiment. This is what the mystics of evolution like myself see very clearly. And we don't just see it, we feel it, we are in it, we are its eyes, we are its voice. Yeah. Because we've been with this process for a long time. We've all had those pioneers that are on the planet now, the midwives, if you like. We've all had very severe dark nights ourselves. 
We've all come through through grace to the other end. We've all been irradiated by the Kundalini in different ways. We've all been broken through by the violent love of God to a deeper embodiment, a deeper coming into the sacredness of the body and of the creation. We all share a knowledge, though it's fragmented, of what is trying to be born. And now what we need more than anything is what's appearing, is the women testifiers to this, the beings like Dorothy Walters, who is testifying to this great power that the Kundalini unleashes to transfigure, I mean, golden everyone. Pioneers that are really bringing in this new evolutionary truth as women, because the feminine power in this is the key power. It's the mother doing this. And we need more and more of that feminine wisdom of the embodied mother power to come through to us, to guide us. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to ground us and make us inconquerable through our passion and our humility and our coming together. It's fascinating to think about that too. We've been seeing the kind of feminine rising in consciousness for the past few years and what timing that this should happen now. Um, yes. It's all aligned. Yeah. It's all aligned. We've been prepared for the global dark night event that is essential to our evolution by the rising of the feminine, by the rising of the sacred masculine, by the work that's been done through Rumi and Kabir, the great universal mystical poets who both told us in different ways how essential it is to die into life, to die into vast, wild, holy love for the whole creation as the beloved. We've been told the way, we've been given the way intravenously by the great mystical teachers on the planet who have broken free of the patriarchal systems and are saying with one voice in different ways, the mother has ordained with the father the birth of a new humanity, an embodied divine humanity, and that everyone is their own religion, their own path, and that the divine will be installed in everyone in a unique way, and everyone will be both separate to pursue the evolution of their gifts and absolutely united in radiant, compassionate, unified love consciousness, working together and separately and separately and together to birth the kingdom queendom, to birth the sacred world in all the institutions of the world, in all the arts of the world, in all the sciences of the world, in all the physical expressions of the world, the embodiment on the earth, humble, simple, pure, radiant, wild, holy, of the full divine through us divinized by love. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> that's the, but it is amazing, but it is, you see, that's what you know. That's what you know perfectly to be real. It's as mad as that. God is as mad as that. And that is what all mystics know. What you come into connection with when you have a mystical experience that is real is a love so wild so beautiful, so holy, so ecstatic, that you realize that that love is capable of anything amazing. Not only because it's supremely powerful, but because it's supremely crazy. It's supremely kind. It's supremely tender for no reason. You don't have to be sober. You don't have to be good. You don't have to have got anything right in your life. It is crazy about you from beyond the beginning. It is utterly out of its mind for love of its own creation, you. And once you connect with that, you understand at a visceral level because you've been inflamed by such joy 
that that power can do anything if we love love back enough, work with love, and realize that love is the great evolutionary transfiguring, engoldening power. And love is the creative power of the evolutionary universe. Love is the Big Bang that's constantly exploding in the universe to bring the whole of matter into a deeper and deeper, more glowing union with spirit. That's love's mad plan. And we can see that plan through love's grace working in our own transformations. We can see it now dancing in quantum physics because quantum physics seems like the geometrical choreography of love's mad dance in all of the opposites of matter and spirit, right? <laughs> so we are at this amazing moment where something absolutely horrifying is happening and something absolutely amazing is happening in the middle of the horror which is why it is a dark night. A dark night isn't simply a terrible destruction, crucifixion, burning to the ground process, although it is. Because as that goes on, the mother also pours in golden revelation after revelation after revelation about the need for wilder compassion, the need for much deeper celebration of life, the need to really adore every moment because every moment is fragile and precious and threatened and menaced globally. She has brought us to where we belong on our knees mm -hmm. and how wonderful because on our knees we can be filled with her great passion and joy and can be transformed from a human being into a consciously divine human being through her wild and holy force, the Kundalini. Yes. And many, there are three ways fundamentally, but that's one of the most extraordinary ways that she does to jumpstart this revolution, evolution that she's not planning, she's <laughs> doing. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? Am I, am I yes. reaching you, my darlings? I really want to. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what we What's can... reaching you? What's reaching you? Um, the conversation about the dark night is so potent because we're all going through it collectively, but people who are on the specific journey of having um, something awaken in them that's causing them to feel disoriented, in my case with the Kundalini awakening, tremendous pain and feeling like I've been abandoned by the divine. I know that's a really common experience that people have. I wonder we, what we can tell those people who are, are listening and are hearing like, this is a good thing, this is something we want, but are deeply suffering and deeply, yes. you know? I think though, there's a wonderful way in starting like that because one of the things that helped me tremendously in my absolutely horrific and terrible dark night which went on for a long time was that I knew through the grace of my teachers the map of the dark night and they said read this read this this is what will happen it will be horrible but you have to hang in there because the what happens through it is so wonderful so it's very important that people hear that this is not something that they have going through because of their own fault. It's not something that they're going through that hasn't got a meaning, that, that it isn't something they can go through, that they're going through that actually will result in disaster. It is potentially something utterly extraordinary because it's a birthing process mm -hmm. and it can birth you into a wholly new level of identity. And the reason why it's so important to know that is because that gives you the guts to go through how shattering and painful and frightening it is. So as the natural qualities of the dark night emerge, total vulnerability, total sense of precariousness, total understanding that you are fundamentally helpless to do anything real about what's exploding all around you, total awareness for the first time probably that actually you've never been in control of anything 
that you are so much more vulnerable, which is why you created the ego in the first place to give you a false sense of strength and control. So this is a complete unmaking experience, but it is known just as the Namibian desert is known. We know where the canyons are. We know where the terrible rock faces are. We know where the moments of feeling absolutely abandoned are. And knowing that those are known, that they are classical, that they are part of a great process of being unmade as an ego-driven being and remade as a self-aware, radiant, love-being, serving humanity. That amazing birthing process is the real meaning of Christ consciousness. It's the real impulse behind the Buddha. It's the real message that the real prophets and mystics have given with one voice saying man is divine. Humanity is divine. Men and women are the children of the light. They can embody the light. That's what people going through the dark night need to know to begin with. Not that it will allay anxiety, but it will give dignity to the process. You'll realize, oh my God, what I'm going through isn't some crazy breakdown, although it also is. It's a breakthrough. This is what is essential because without this happening, I'll never live as a divine human being because I'll still be stuck in these cinemas of illusion that are now being burned down in front of me. If I let Kali dance in the dark night, she can destroy everything but truth and truth is all I need. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. Because the truth that is what will be revealed is the truth of being already divine, just as you are in a divine body through divine grace in a divine world. That's what will be revealed by the dark night. But it can't be revealed if you don't go through the process, you have to melt down, you have to be strong enough to weep, you have to be strong enough to say, I feel completely crazy. You have to be strong enough to say, yes, they really are as corrupt as I imagined they would be and didn't dare face. Yes, we may be a long way further on in the climate crisis than I ever dared face because now that I'm facing coronavirus, I'm facing the fact that I've really not been paying attention to what's actually burning and why the air is so full of psychic smoke right yes so there's a way in which the dark night batters you down so that you can finally start being real about what's real about what's going on about what's happening to the poor about what's happening to the animals about what's happening to us because we're allowing that to happen and that's a very important part of the process so I'm not going to help people not go through that because I know that is what saves them. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is to offer how you get through that. Yes. The first thing is that you need to love God with a wild passion at the moment that this starts hope happening to you because God is doing it to you and your only refuge from what God is doing to you is in God. You don't have anywhere else you can go to. There's nowhere else we're going to as a human race turn to in this crisis, but to the divine depths in ourselves because nothing else on any level is going to begin to begin to work. It's that serious, right? Yes. So then you start really in your devotion, practicing mystical surrender, mystical acceptance. That's the way for you to become strong enough to let go, to say, I have been too cut off, too damaged by consumerism, too bloody narcissistic too self-absorbed to notice that most people are in terrible shape and now I can see it because 
everyone's in terrible shape because there it is, the invisible enemy, the manifestation of our own madness and narcissism and greed turned to put us now in the position that we put the whole of nature. Nature's been burning like our lungs are burning. Nature's been finding it hard to breathe like we're finding it hard to breathe. Nature's been the victim of the invisible enemy of our insane, insane greed to dominate and destroy. Now that's all turned through the karmic precision of Kali as a weapon to bring us to our knees to the place where we'll be vulnerable enough to love enough and to open to outrageous grace. Outrageous grace, I like that. So do you see how I'm not, I'm trying not to be a supermarket of easy fixes because the, the dark night, the, the poison is the medicine, the dark night process is the saving grace. It's yeah. not being saved from it that is the saving grace. It's the extremity of it that is the saving grace. And I think it can be really challenging for people who don't have a taste of that love, of that divine beauty. I think it can be really hard for them to get through this dark night when they don't know that that's what's at the end. And I think- That's the point of the practice, isn't it? Don't okay. you think, I think it's, it's no good going out talking about spiritual awakening mm -hmm. without saying to people honestly, look, what you're being invited to is a massive love affair with the love force that is creating the whole universe. It's the most devastating and thrilling and totally transforming experience. But you have got to turn up in the love affair. And the way you turn up in a love affair is by, in this love affair is by doing the practices, is by learning the words of love, learning to turn your being to love in meditation, in prayer, in mantra, learning to perfume your being, to make your being beautiful enough out of its passion and longing and rawness and honesty and vulnerability for love itself to come and make love to it. That's what you need to tell people. And if people, that's what all the mystics throughout history have told people. If you want to realize that this is true, it's, you're not going to realize it's true simply by listening or by reading a book, you're going to realize it's true because it's happening to you because finally you've been humble enough to turn up in this extraordinary mystery and say, I love you, help me, teach me. I'm doing the words in Sanskrit or the ones I invented in the bath. I'm turning up, I'm here. Help me grow in you because you're the only game in town and you're what I'm really in love with anyway, underneath and through all the other loves. So let's get real around here. Amazing. Let's the way you put that. words to that feeling is just so beautiful and meaningful. It's such a challenging thing to do. So thank it is you. Darling, but it, isn't it the point of why we're here is to help people feel these things. Yeah. This isn't an intellectual proposition we're inviting people to. This is saying to everybody, the universe is a furnace of fire and that fire is love. Jump into the fire, burn away and realize your divine nature. That's what you're saying to people. That's what all the mystics are saying. And they've all had the same experience in different amazing ways, unique to them. So what is everybody waiting for? What on earth would you think was worth experiencing on the earth when you could experience that? What on earth would you come here if not to experience that? Why? Why? And why choose anything less as the goal of your life? Because only that could heal you and reveal to you who you and everyone else essentially are. That says it all, yes. It, yeah. It's so important to, to share that with people because otherwise they'll think that there's a solution to their problem 
The solution is burning away their problem, getting on their knees, getting humble, turning up in the love relationship, opening to mystery, letting the terror and the horror reveal itself as a way of making them more authentic. Doing the real work is the only antidote to the incredible precariousness and fragility that the real path of birthing entails. But you just got to do the real work. This is the real work. Yes, thank you. Thank you, that, that is it. That is um, it. Does it ring true to you though? Uh, so much, so okay. much. I, I feel it with every fiber of my being when you're talking. So thank you for bringing me back to that experience because it can be so easy to intellectualize it when we're talking about it all the time. It's, that's the craziness. So I, what I advise people to do more and more is to get hold of the really great mystical poets. Yeah. Get hold of Rumi, get hold of Kabir. That's why I've been plunged into Kabir. And live with them. Because what's really important is not simply to know these things, but to be living these things, but to be feeling these things in our bliss bodies, in our communion with each other. Because this is not a mental birth. This is a birth of a fully irradiated mind, fully open sacred heart, and increasingly divinized cells of the body that are dedicated to deeper communion in tenderness, in love, in talk, in touch, in all of the manifestations of love. Mm. You see? Yes. yes. And I think that's, that's all we have to remember is that this is love. What we're talking about, even when we use the word God, is love. And if you yes. can imagine that most perfect, beautiful love, that's where we're all heading. And that's what we're all heading to incarnate. We're going to be feeling that in the depths of the cells of our bodies, in the depths of our hearts, in the ways in which we think, in the ways in which we create, in the ways we establish new friendships, in the ways we make love, in the ways we caress our animals, in the ways we tear down the walls of separation and tribal madness and religious division just to face each other as divine beings and live in a divine world with gratitude and humility, collaborating with divine love to recreate everything for love. That's what yeah. she's offering us. In fact, she's making it perfectly clear that there are only two paths now. You can go down the path of this hubris and greed and madness and separation and you're going to destroy yourself very quickly because if you think coronavirus is the only problem we're going to be dealing with, I've got news for you. Your climate is burning to death, right? And coronavirus is the first dance of Kali in this larger dance of showing us what we've done to our world. This is the drum roll for the symphony, right? Absolutely. So we better get with the program of adoration so that she can birth us into being strong lovers of truth and joy and compassion so that we can be born out of this experience, not waste this experience, be transmuted by this experience so that we can help others be born too. Absolutely. The opportunity yeah. in the crisis. Yeah. It's, it's, an amazing, it's a staggering opportunity. And if you understand the crisis as this mystical dark night, if you understand that the terror and horror and vulnerability and agony of the dark night are totally accepted and known and need to be accepted and known and surrendered to, they are holy. They will change it and not to be terrified of, they're to be surrendered to so that they can teach you humility and vulnerability and compassion and equality of everything that lives so that you get out of your appalling narcissism, your fantastic, crazy self-absorption, which is fed by everything that our culture celebrates. The dark night is the acid designed to burn all of the false mask of the full self, of the face, of your lying to yourself about yourself and about the world. That's what the dark night is. 
So once you get to know that you're in the hands of something that will not let you go until you learn what it's coming to teach you and will drag you through whatever is necessary to teach you those things, then you can turn with your whole being to the other hand of God that is the hand that is golden, that is giving you revelation after revelation, because finally you're humble enough to look into the eye of your own true splendor through the grace of the splendor. Isn't that insane? But that's how it is. That's the great dance of the divine. That's what all the great mystics know. That's what they're saying, all of them. And here it is being manifested on a global level. And here is the Kundalini force appearing in millions of people having spontaneous vast experiences of this love force waking them up. Yeah. Now what we've got to do is to bring together those who've been together on this journey and create a Kundalini healing force together with the map that I'm giving and with all kinds of practical advice by those who have been through this experience and are going through this experience to help others deal with this experience in ways that lessen the terror and the anxiety and enable the integration of light and spirit and matter to happen smoother. And those are tips that us evolutionaries need to share in a way on a network that we should create to be able to do this to and for people, to serve this birth. First the big vision and the, and the map, then the practical liberating suggestions that can only be born from the real journey because you have to learn those tricks as you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's do it. Like you said, we're all here together for a reason. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get Dorothy on. Let's help people. Let's open it up for people who see the film. Yeah. To have a real chance to meet us all and for us to meet them and for us to be able to help them with whatever small nugget of real truth we have. Yeah, that's our whole intention. Our whole intention. You guys talk. Yeah, that, that is the intention of the film, is to uh, make this relevant for people, make this practical for people, and again, to offer that hope. So, Andrew, but Let's I make a network out of the film. Yeah. All of us together. I'd love to be part of it, get Dorothy on it, and bring people together through the film to do, they don't have to pay a lot, but we could all do this, a hundred people could be receiving all of this. Yes, exactly. That is, you share our vision, so um, we are definitely going to speak more about this. I would love to be part of anything you do and help in any way. How did you feel that was what I said? Was it useful to you? Oh, yes. Personally, it was just lighting me up. It's so, so relevant. And uh, I, I just know your way of coming across is, is so beautiful and magical. So I'm so grateful for you giving us this time. Oh, thank you. And I hope it's really helpful because it's got to be, I, I hope it's beautiful because it is beautiful, the whole process, but the, it's got to be helpful and clear. It's got to be practical. Yes. If you can see that this is the geometry of it. Yes. Yeah, I love the way you put that, the geometry of it. I think that is a great way of thinking about this. You know, once we can see the shape, then we can know what we're dealing with. We know how to hold it. We're expanded by yeah. grace. First, you begin by realizing there is such an amazing process. Secondly, you really do bother to read about it so that you can begin to intuit some of its shape. Then, as it starts to happen, you realize you know nothing, but you can now know what is meant when you studied about the annihilation through doubt, the annihilation through the shattering of your pretensions about yourself, the annihilation of any kind of certainty that ha about what happens in the world, what the world is really like. You can see that the ones who've been through it have been through it the same experience, because it's an experience, a phenomenological experience right yeah it's important to have those those people to look to as examples of people that have come out the other side so right and, and that's what's so important when people when you go to console people yeah. 
Yeah. Don't console them too much. Say, you lucky thing, now you're being right. re remade. Yes. You're going to have to go through a lot of this, but the way to get steady is to do the sacred work, meditate and pray to God to give you the inner strength to go through it. Stop thinking you're going to be able to pill it away or do a breathing exercise that will stop it being so painful. Be brave now. Go into the pain. Yeah, embrace it. Um, I think we're going to be starting a, a founda or nonprofit or foundation with this work. I'd love for you to be a part of it. We can have a separate conversation about that. Oh, God, we'll, yeah, whatever, everything will emerge from this. Anything I can do for you, you see where I'm going, anything you'd like me to talk about. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Andrew, Thank you, darling. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap because I have to get onto a... Of course we can. Go, my but, darling, go. Kate, do you want to wrap us up just for the, the, the video piece here? Um, sure. So I feel like we could have 20 more conversations just like this, but um, thank you for watching. And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, thank you all for being with us three. We had, I had an amazing time with you two, and I hope we were able to give some real hope and excitement to everyone out there because terrible though these times are, they're also thrilling times. Let's get the, the joy of that thrill. Yes. Love it. Get with the love, get with the joy. And thank you again so much for being with us, Andrew. My pleasure. Um, how can people find you if they'd like to learn more Andrew about your work? www.andrewharvey.net. I'm on there. And I would love it if people could get with my new book on Kabir, which I think people would be crazy about. It's turned me to gold, 108 translations from Kabir. And if there's anybody we all need now at this moment, as we go through this amazing birth journey, it's this man who was born himself and tells us what it feels like. So if I've been able to enchant you, please go to the big enchanter, Kabir, and get a dose of radical love fire down your sacred mouth. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right. Well, love, thank you. Love. Love. Love to you. Us. God bless you. Yes, yes. love so much. Yes. Lots of love and uh, lots of love. Lots of love. Okay. We'll be in touch with you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.